Hello everybody and welcome! The European Space Agency announced that they have now entered the final stages in their search for new astronauts. The last time we talked about this, which was in February, ESA had whittled down the candidates from more than 22,000 to just 1,361. Now phase 3 has ended and according to a recent article on the agency's website, a little over 400 applicants had participated in that. Meaning, more than 98% of all original applicants, yours truly included, have already been rejected. If you are new to this channel or this topic in general, let me give you a quick recap on what's going on here. In early 2021, ESA opened applications for just four permanent positions as astronaut and four astronaut reserve positions for the agency. This resulted in a massive influx of applications from all ESA member states and even some non-member states which had to be rejected outright due to ineligibility. 22,523 people wanted to join the European Astronaut Corps, but only four will make it, which is a passing rate of just 0.02%. If you want to get into more details about the original number of applicants and how the member nations stack up compared to each other, you can watch my video from February where I highlighted this with some statistics and graphs. From the most recent news we can now discern that ESA is now in phase 4. What does that mean? Well, for this we turn to the Astronaut Applicant Handbook, which was published last year. However, the agency appears to be a bit inconsistent in its own wording. The article describes Phase 3 as a series of psychological assessments, while in the handbook that is called Stage 3, with Test Phase 3 being described as the medical tests of Stage 4 of the process, which the recent article calls Phase 4. The origin of this confusion is the handbook starting its test phase 1 in stage 2, since stage 1 is the initial screening where they sorted out applications based on the documents submitted. By the way, that was the stage where I was already cut after I had done all required medical exams and tried to get in as part of the 22,523. If you're interested in the entire experience I had with this, you can watch that video by clicking on the symbol on the top right or the link in the video description. Back to the phases or stages of the process. I will use both words interchangeably, but when I use numbers, I will refer to the big numbers in the center of this diagram and not the ones in the fine print. So, what type of psychometric tests, individual and group exercises and practical tests were the applicants subjected to? Unfortunately, ESA won't tell us. Those are deemed confidential, but apparently it was all done to ensure that the candidates were suited for the work as an astronaut. After the candidates' minds were tested, it is now time for their bodies to get through various evaluations. Unfortunately, there are not really any details on these tests available either, but being generally in good shape and able to withstand a few Gs on launch are at least a minimum of what astronauts should bring to the table. If you have to live for an extended time in microgravity like the crew of the International Space Station does, regular exercise is crucial to reduce muscle atrophy and the loss of bone mass. Real estate in space is expensive and a significant portion of the ISS has been made into a sort of microgravity fitness center, so being able to regularly exercise with this type of equipment will also be a requirement for the astronaut hopefuls. Some fun little tidbit for you, the medical exams would probably have been the stage where I would have been kicked out even if I had passed the previous tests. The height limit for astronauts is 190 centimeters, and while my height varies depending on time of day and my constitution, I am usually a few centimeters above that. This is me standing next to the original suit of the so far only fellow Austrian who ever went to space, Franz Fieberg, back in 1991. Back then, Soyuz capsules had a height limit of 183 centimeters, and Fieberg was supposedly 180 centimeters tall at the time of his flight. So, yeah, Soyuz would be out of the question for me. In addition to the regular astronaut positions, ESA is also searching for a para-astronaut, meaning an astronaut with a physical disability. In the current iteration, candidates with what ESA calls lower limb deficiency and those below 100 centimeters of height are being considered for the project. 
It is interesting to me that the psychological evaluation was made before the physical tests began. To me, that signifies that it is harder to find people mentally suited for the job as an astronaut than it is to find candidates that can pass the medical exams. And these medical exams already started in parallel to the psychological tests from May 2nd onward, while the psych tests were still ongoing until the end of June. The final question is, when will we learn who the four people are going to be that will fly into space for Europe? Well, there is still one hurdle to take, the panel interview, which will also verify the educational qualifications of the candidates. Also, a criminal background check will be performed. Which is odd to me, considering that this would be something I would perform before I let people come in for tests at the European Astronaut Center, which surely has some high security areas that require protection. But it's not my agency and I certainly hope ESA knows what they are doing. These panel interviews will be conducted over the course of this summer. If all goes according to plan, we will likely have new European astronauts announced this autumn. And I can't wait to see who it's going to be. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.